Hi, this is O'Connor in Malaysia, but also I'm here studying the effects of the coronavirus and the trade war on the global supply chain. Now, one thing for sure is that the effects of the trade war and the coronavirus are totally different. The trade war impacted the cost of the landed goods at customs in the USA. So that includes the bill of materials, that includes the labor, that includes shipping costs, the actual costs to actually get your goods to customs in the USA as it is landed and you report it and then they add on 10% or 25%. Now, the importers in the USA that had the power, they were able to go back to the factories in China and say, well, hang on, we want you to share this extra cost of the tariff. Those importers that didn't have the power, well, they couldn't do that. And that was a big thing that was going on with the trade war. And a lot of factories that I spoke to in China were pressured by a lot of the buyers to wear or at least share the costs of the tariffs that were put on particular product categories. The coronavirus is different. That has affected sourcing from China, but also the distribution of goods to all over the world. It's affected the physical movement of goods, and that started with getting goods produced in the factories in China throughout February and into March until the China government got the factories up and running again. The factories couldn't do much because most of the factory workers were isolated. So when the factories were able to get back working again, they still had challenges because there may have been key people that operate certain machines that were also had to remain isolated, maybe because they were from Wuhan, or maybe they were under quarantine for 14 days for being associated with someone that's got COVID for many reasons. So therefore the factory couldn't operate as efficiently as a result. And that caused delay in making products. Now, of course, that had a ripple effect in terms of the export of products to countries all around the world and not just the USA. What you also need to bear in mind is that the coronavirus has had a huge effect and we're yet to see the full effect in terms of the demand for goods from emerging economies. That demand is because buyers, consumers around the world are now focusing on needs, food, shelter, clothing, protective equipment like face masks. They're not focusing on wants, extraneous items, which they would buy month in, month out in the usual growth of any economy. So that's a big difference between the coronavirus and the trade war. But there's one thing that both of these events have had on the way in which companies operate the global supply chain. And that is, it has brought to the attention of C managers, boards of directors about the need to have a resilient supply chain, the need to understand how resilient the supply chain is. In other words, to do a stress test just like the banks did back in 2008 and 2009. They had to go through stress tests to make sure that they can withstand another financial tsunami as what happened in 2007, 2008. Now the tsunami is in regard to a virus, a natural disaster or some other political event like a trade war. And multinationals, large companies, need to have someone in place who can do the stress tests, who can understand the full implications of their supply chain coming out of particular countries around the world. It is very important that companies 
understand the actual transparency of the supply chain. Who is the second tier? Who is the third tier of the supply chain? Because a natural disaster may affect the second and third tier, that is the supply of raw materials, to the main assembler that you are buying from as an importer or as a multinational. So these are the implications of the trade war and the coronavirus. These things you need to keep in mind in thinking about how things are going to go forward in terms of the management of global supply chain. Check in again for another commentary on the effects of these worldwide events on the management of global supply chain. This is Neil O'Connor. Thank you for listening.